How are you doing today, Rob? I'm doing just fine, Randy. Fantastic. I'm looking forward to this interview, so we'll get things started. <clears throat> Robert, this is going to be a really fun one for me because I we've never met. You and I have never met before, so uh, tell me uh, a little bit about yourself. Well, there's not much to tell. What you see is what you get. Yeah. Huh? I've, uh, How about the pipe business? Were, were you in the steel pipe business? I'm in the steel pipe business. You still are. Okay. I uh, started out in the construction business, building roads and locations for Lone Star Gas Company in Texas. I moved from there to taking up pipe from Mr. Pete Knowles out of Gensco Pipe. And uh, I pulled some pipelines, loaded their trucks, hauled pipe all over the country. And of course, back then we didn't have any cell phones or anything anywhere close. And when you were 40, 50 miles out in the country, you just made the agreement the night before when you were going to be there, how many trucks was going to be there, what you were going to put on them, and it just worked. Uh, they wasn't calling you in the middle of the day and say, well, we've decided not to load but one truck or something, and uh, nobody was late. Sure. If you were late, somebody else took your place, and uh, it always worked pretty good that way. What's and the name of your company? Structural Pipe of Oklahoma. And what's the, based out of Oklahoma City? We're right over here in Moore. Our address is Moore. We're in Oklahoma City, but we have a Moore address. Very good. We're in uh, Oklahoma City, Cleveland County, with a Moore address. So you can't find us with a search warrant and a helicopter. <laughs> I love it. But, what, what uh, year did you start? Uh, I opened this business here in 1982. I was telling Al, I, while I was pulling the pipe and hauling pipe and everything, I, I had a good friend that worked for Fort Worth Pipe. His name was Leonard Kilburn. And uh, he wanted to go in business down in our area. And uh, I'd signed some statements and stuff for him to take to the bank to borrow the money to go into business. and. Uh, I hauled a lot of pipe for him all over the country. And uh, after two or three years, he told me, he said, you just as well to give up all that business about uh, hauling for everybody else and taking up pipelines. I've got more than you can do and I'll keep you busy. And a couple of years of that, he told me, he said, we need, we need to be in business together. So, by then, he had his company pretty well established down there, Midwest Pipe and Supply. He was a NSPDA member. We never attended any of the meetings or anything, but he was a member until he died, and uh, that was just a few years back. And my son came down with leukemia, and they only had three treatment centers in the United States at that time one in Chicago, one in uh, St. Petersburg, Florida, and one here in Oklahoma City. And he said, well, we need a yard in Oklahoma City anyway. He said, get up there and see what you can find. I found a little piece of property, one that Al had uh, worked at in years past. I bought the property, we put in the yard, stayed up here till uh, my son died and uh, got a divorce over all the stress and what have you, and decided I was gonna have to be doing something, so I just stayed in the pipe business. I said, I'm gonna, Al asked me how long I was gonna stay in the pipe business. I said, I'm gonna keep selling pipe till I run out of money. <laughs> <laughs> he, said, he said he wasn't gonna retire till I did, so yeah. we're in it together. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. So basically, you were in the business of, of hauling pipe and take ups. Yes. And that kind of morphed into having your own pipe right. company where right. you, you took care of the whole sure did. shooting. Match. Yeah. Because as you know, Pete Knowles uh, himself and Jerry Rubenstein kind of banded 
bunch of guys together right. back in 75 to join the NAA. Sure, sure. Yeah. And uh, we bought pipe from Pete for years, and I was, uh, just do a little bragging here, I was the first driver out of Fort Worth that could go to Uvalde, get loaded, and be back in Fort Worth in time to unload in a day. <laughs> That's pretty good. <laughs> but you had those Mexicans down there, you'd carry them a case of beer, and they'd pull you out of line 20 trucks back and load you and get you out of there. There's always a few tricks. That's right. This leave. Yeah. That's, <laughs> right. That's terrific. Who were some of the other uh, memorable characters that? Uh, well, um, the boys down at Lone Star Steel and uh, Fort Worth Pipe all worked a lot together back then, and they loaded you 24 hours a day at Lone Star Steel. So you had an appointment at one or two o'clock in the morning. You had to be there and get loaded and get out of there. And as they went to breaking up the bigger companies. Older guys got to giving it up. Well, then they'd close the yards, and we'd buy the yards here and there. And and uh, my partner Leonard always knew where to get rid of the pipe, and he'd leave it up to me to get it out of the yards and get it in. And we bought uh, Superior Iron and Metals. They had a yard in. Uh, Shreveport and one in Abilene, Texas. And we had a little meeting there one evening. And he told me, he said, we only have a certain amount of money. And if you can guarantee me that you can get the pipe in here, I can guarantee you that I can get it worked and sold. I said, and he said, we've got 30 day terms with them. I said, well, I, I can get it in here. So I'd be sitting in Shreveport at seven o'clock every morning. I could get into Fort Worth and unload, or get into Burleson, that's where our yard was at Burleson, unload and be in Abilene before 3.30 where they could load me back. I'd come back in and unload myself after everybody was gone, take a shower, eat supper, and be at Shreveport at 7.30 the next morning, 31 days. I had all the pipe out of both yards. <laughs> wow. But, you know, we were we were in it to make something back then. You you didn't sit around and do anything. And I'm kind of like Benny and the rest of them here. I, I could have probably spent a little more time at home with the kids, but uh, when you're a little younger, you're a little greedier. <laughs> so you don't mind putting in the time, but... Right. Uh, Things have changed a lot. You do. You've got cell phones now. You got cancel the deal in the middle of the deal when you're in the middle of making the deal and uh, put it on the computer. I'm still a little hard headed. I'm harder headed than Al. I don't have any computers in my office. Still write everything, handwritten invoices. Make all my notes handwritten. Keep a day book. Who I talk to. And, what about, and uh, I don't regret it any. Yeah. I've, uh, I've not had to tell the people that I can't sell you any pipe today because the computer's down. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, speaking of those, you know, changes, those major changes yeah. uh, in the industry, which one of those, you know, to you is the most amazing, whether it be that or Telefax machines back in the early 80s? We or, we got the uh, fax machines. As a matter of fact, I still have a fax machine. And uh, our the, the part that we were talking about a while ago that I miss the most is the personal contact that you have with the people. Today, you buy it off of the computer or, or what have you. You never know who had it, what they're going to do, what kind of guy he is and uh, fill out 15 pages of credit forms, have the bank send them all that uh, credit information. I can still pick up the phone and call people that I've never seen and buy more pipe than I can pay for. About the personal touch. Yes, yes. yes. And having those personal relationships. Yes. Has always, it's, that's always meant a lot to me. I'd, 
I'd buy a pipe from people that I knew and pay a little more money for it because I know them. And Steve and Benny and Al, they all do the same thing. You know, you, you'd rather do business with a guy that you know than to look at the computer screen and say, well, it sounds like a good deal. <laughs> Very true. Very true. Had you uh, ever stumbled into an NASPD meeting? Or no. You, yeah. You Never had, have. You guys probably just got together on your own. Over yeah. And coffee or a beer or something. Well, and, and we'd, uh, Pete and them would have us all down deer hunting once a year or for a big barbecue down there in the middle of the summer. It, uh, you'd, you'd meet the guys. There's a lot of guys I meet, just like uh, Steve. I've I've heard about Steve a lot. I've talked to people that know Steve. I've done a lot of business with people that do business with Steve. But until the last few years, I've never met him personally and uh, still haven't done any business with him. But sounds like he's about to quit anyway. <laughs> so, not any use trying to strike up a, a long term relation over that. <laughs> no use at all. No, he's 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 giving it up. If you uh, uh, if you could go back, Robert, uh, in time and um, to the very start, you know, of your career, what advice would you give a young Robert? Well, I'd tell him, go get a government job where he's got a guaranteed salary <laughs> and he'll retire in 20 years with plenty of money. Be paid for life. Either that or be a politician. They're guaranteed forever. Yeah. But uh, Al always told me, he said, the secret to being successful is buy low, sell high. Sounds like my stockbroker. I never could make that work. <laughs> <laughs> okay, very good. I love it. What uh, uh, if you were able to try to explain to a young buck, uh, you know, about the work <clears throat> ethic and how hard work it takes to have your own business and the sacrifices that you make? Our generation and the generation before us have not taught the work ethic like that. Everybody thinks now if you've got an education, you're going to automatically get a check. But uh, you can't take these young guys and make them go to work. They're not going to do it. They think they're going to get a check when they get that diploma. And, uh, and I don't. I don't just talk about today. I'm talking about for the last 20 years, they're that way. You, you can't take those guys with a college diploma and make them physically go to work. They just, there's something about it. We've ruined them. Uh, yeah, so it's, it's about uh, trying to figure out that work ethic. It's, uh, it's it's not something easy to teach. No, you, you, no, you, 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 and and you can't teach it in one generation. It has to be down the family line. They it was born into the work ethic. Everybody worked. Everybody pulled on the same train and uh, worked for a, worked for the end goal. Today. Absolutely. Everybody wants to do something different. They don't want to do what their dad did or what their uncle did. They want to do something different. And they, they think they're going to start getting that check when they get the diploma. Yeah, yeah I understand. So, and if you don't believe that, you go out there and talk to a few of them. I understand what you're saying. Um, when you think back to maybe some of those, uh, those tougher periods in the pipe business, you know, when I think of them, I'm, I'm thinking of the early to mid '80s, when you know oil just took a big tank. Oh yeah. Uh, um, you know what were some of those uh, lowest or toughest points in your career? What what kept you going and, and getting through those times? I was telling Al a while ago. My son died. In what year was that? '85, and we were just getting into the major 
crash of the of the oil deal and the bust and the banks going broke and I was new in Oklahoma. I'd only been here three years and uh, I had uh, about $187,000 worth of bankruptcies, companies that I didn't know much about. I just went to doing business with them when I moved up here. And I thought to myself, that's really gonna get me. And then my son died and I got a divorce over all that uh, stress. and. Uh, we went on there and I told my partner, I said, I think I'm just gonna give it up. Just sell this darn thing and give it up. He said, well, I said, you gotta be doing something. And uh, this is not the worst thing that ever happened to you. I said, we're still alive, they can't eat us. We don't owe anybody anything. I said, well, I guess that's right. So. So Just, your partner yeah. helped you get Oh, yeah. He, he's a... And that was Leonard? Yes. Midwest. Midwest Pipe Midwest and Supply. <clears throat> Burleson, Texas. Sounds like a wise man. He was. And he's tough. And and a hard worker, too. He, we, work, we work side by side a lot. Long, hard hours. Yes, sir. If, uh, if one of those young guys today, you know, were to, to ask you what is the secret to success what would you tell them persevere to endure <laughs> and maybe try a little work out that's right <laughs> that's persevere <laughs> <laughs> to endure yes fantastic what are uh, one or two things that you wouldn't do again if you had a chance to go back in time and change something well the the secret of most businesses is uh, take the girl home you went to the dance with, and that's uh, that was one of the deals that I got into there during the oil boom. Everything looks exciting on that side of the road that you get away from the structural business and get into the oil business where the volume's high, the expense is high, the profit's very low. And and that's what knocks you in the head. You you start uh, start doing something that works for you. You should stick with it. You shouldn't be changing. Stay in your lane. That's right. Stay in your lane. <laughs> Very good. That's good advice. Besides your career uh, in the pipe business, what are you most proud of? What what gives you great joy or satisfaction? Well, I feel good about the family I've raised and the friends that I have and the business relations that I have with the people I do business with. I, I'm happy with that. I think that uh, has some measure of success of a, of a guy's life. Absolutely. And I'm, I'm pretty happy with that. Fantastic. And all these guys here even though I didn't do business with Steve and uh, Benny much, we all know who we are. Yeah. And speaking of, you know, the guys in this room, we've got a really good collection of, yeah. you know, from, <laughs> from one generation to the next, yes. to the next, to the next. And um, how would you describe, uh, you know, each other and, you know, your, your long term relationships with the men in this room? Well, when I got to know Donnie, he didn't know any more about pipe than, than I know about airplanes. And uh, he has certainly been a real benefit to the pipe industry. And uh, I think they've got a guy over there that's helped them tremendously. Oh, Darren, I think he's a very big asset to their company. And, uh, and I'm proud to know them all. How about Al? How long have you known Al? Well, we just got acquainted over lunch while he was <laughs> Al and I have been doing business ever since I come to Oklahoma. Oh, that's fantastic. All right. We still do a little business. I don't do business directly with Al because he's too busy. 
as a matter of fact, he wants to make more money than I want to spend. <laughs> 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 All right. Well, and you say you've done a little bit of uh, business with uh, Benny. And of course, we're talking about Ben Shanker. Uh, you probably uh, are more friends with Ben right. than right. business partners, so right. to speak. Right. Right. And you know him through Al and just being in Oklahoma City. Well, I I knew I knew Ben when they were over on 29th Street in. Uh, uh, I'm sure that we've done a little business along. It's just been a long time. Uh, you can't remember every deal that you ever do, but I don't. I know we never had a bad deal. Yeah. And uh, we uh, sometimes sometimes shared the same truck drivers and uh, different things. We. But uh, I've known Al ever since I've been in Oklahoma City. Cool. <laughs> Do you have uh, a mentor or a leader or a family member, anybody that played a key role in your success? Not any longer. <laughs> I, Maybe it was Leonard. Huh? I'm the old guy You're in the, the bunch guy. now. I uh, went to one of the reunions the other day, and we used to all sit around like do with Al and Benny and talk to the old guys. I looked around there, and I was the only old guy there. I said, Boy, this this got me on the wrong side of the fence here. I never played the old guy before. <laughs> That's great. Well, let me ask you. It, I want to ask you if there's anything that I haven't asked you. Is there anything that that maybe a question that uh, I haven't been able to come up with? Is there anything you want would like to share? No, oh, I think we've pretty well been over everything. I've, like I say. I never, I never went to any of the meetings. I, I never got out of my area much. Just Oklahoma and uh, Texas. Went to California a couple of times. Didn't like the pipe business in California, so I didn't uh, try to expand anything into that. And uh, I've been pretty happy with the way things are. I'm not nearly as greedy now as I was when I was young, so. If I sell a piece of pipe every now and then, I'm still happy. Very good. Well, and I do. I sell a piece every now and then. That a, that a man. <laughs> Very good. Well, Robert, we sure appreciate your time today. Well, well I appreciate the opportunity to be up here with everybody, and sure nice to have met you. All right. Good, sir. Thank you very much for your time. You bet. Thank you.